What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Bray K, and I just jumped off the porch with DGB. Y'all know what's going on. Can't hate on no bitch, I'm harder. Walk on beach, it like they water. Lie to a nigga, shit like I'm a lawyer. I tell all right, so we got the one and only Bray K jumping yes. off the porch with us today. Yes, what it do? What's going on? Man, I'm feeling good. How you feeling today? I'm good. How you feeling? I'm doing great. Doing awesome. great. I know we got you out early in the morning too, but I love it. Early bird <laughs> get the worm, so I'd rather do it now than later. Nah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. so welcome. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I just got back from performing with y'all on the South by Southwest stage for uh, DGB, yep. so yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Bubba, man. Yeah, shout out to him. Yeah, how would you, how would you describe your, um, you know, your experience at South by this year? It was lit, it was my first time going, and that was my first time performing. Oh, really? Ever. Like, I never performed before, so I was happy to get it out the way and then for <laughs> it to be with DGB, like, that was exciting for me. I mean, the people took to me well. They follow me, wrote me. I got so many connects down there. And stuff yeah, that's like the that. best so thing about South was, Yeah, it was lit. Like, I really, I really loved every minute of it. No, nah, that's yeah. dope right there. Yeah. So first performance, was yeah. you nervous before you hit that stage or just anxious or was you ready to turn up? <laughs> I was nervous, honestly. Like, I'm always nervous before, but once I get going, it just... Break hey, she activated, she ready. So yeah, I got up there and I shocked myself. For real? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, most artists say like once that the music drops and they up there, they get those first words out. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, what we good. It is. We home now. I swear, I don't know what it is. It's just like a monster just take over. So yeah, it was lit. I was happy, excited. You know, it went well. It was a vibe. So yeah. most definitely. Now, it's a good start to, you know, future performances and yeah. everything, too. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready now. No, that's what's good. <laughs> so, so what are you working on while you're out here in Atlanta? What brought you to the city? So I came out, of course, for DGB, and I had some other things going on, working and stuff. Like yesterday, we went out, and um, I had a label meeting okay. with Authentic Empire. So, yeah, we working. We, we outside. Okay. <laughs> now, do you come out to Atlanta pretty often or not too much? I do. I do, actually. I stay in Huntsville right now. Okay. I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana, of course, yeah. 318, period. But I stay in Huntsville, and it's like a hop and a skip down the road. We always in Georgia and Tennessee. Okay. So I'm always in Atlanta. Nah, that's what's yeah. good. Yeah. All right. So like you said, you're from Shreveport. Yeah. So for the people watching, don't know nothing about Shreveport. Yeah, okay. So put us down. Like, talk about the culture up there. I, oh, Ratchet. Okay. So <laughs> it's the home of Ratchet, right? <laughs> yes. It's yes. the birthplace Ratchet of Ratchet. City. So just to give a little background for the people watching who may not know. So Shreveport, well, before I get into what Shreveport is like, I'm going to talk about how I ended up, you know, in Alabama. So okay. I ended up in Alabama. My mom, she always dealt with like mental health issues. So she ended up giving us up or whatever. And so the first time she ended up giving us up, um, I was about nine or 10 and my grandparents were stationed in Huntsville, Alabama. My mm -hmm. grandpa retired military. So she asked them to, you know, take over just to help her out with us a little bit. And we came, me, my brother, my sister, for nine months, I absolutely hated it. I'm like, I want to go back home. So I, I ended up moving back home. And then my dad ended up doing um, 14 years in prison. Oh, wow. He had been in there since I was five, but he got out. Well, was getting out. He was stationed in the halfway house in Birmingham around when I was like 17. And he's like, I want to be in a relationship. I want to get to know you. And we were supposed to move to Birmingham originally, but his parents were in Huntsville. So we ended up moving to uh, Huntsville so we could build a relationship hmm. with each other and stuff like that. And then, you know, so 17, I went home at nine, came back at 17 for my dad and been out here ever since then, you know. So I had my son and stuff like that. But as far as Shreveport goes, it's very ratchet. Ain't no place like home. I love it. I ended up moving back in 2019. Okay. And, you know, I was, that's when I first started writing music. Like, that's when I first was like, you know what, I, I want to do music. I was going through a hard time and I was just sad and depressed. I'm writing every day and stuff like that. You know, I pulled up the Southern Maid. Give me some Southern Maid. If y'all in the city, make sure y'all get that. Um, Southern classic, like the culture very turned up, very like much partying and, and stuff like that, but it could get 
real crazy out there. Like it's a smaller city, mm -hmm. yet it's a lot of crime, a lot of shooting, a lot of traumatic stuff that go down. So you just gotta move Millicent and be, you know, you'll be all right. But yeah. yeah, I love it. Ain't no place like it. Okay. It's ratchet. That's how I describe it. It's just ratchet. <laughs> so how would you describe Huntsville then? It sounds like probably the complete opposite of Shreveport. Huns or? Complete opposite. It's the, like, Huntsville chill. You know what I'm saying? You could just vibe, you lay low. I don't really do too much. I don't really interact with a lot of people. I don't really go out. I don't drink. I don't smoke. So, you know, Huntsville for me, I'm raising my son and I'm uh, graduating in two months. So I'm just finishing school. And, okay. You know, it, I can't say too much. It got me here. So I appreciate them for that. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where are you going to school at? I go to Ross. It's a vocational school. Okay. So I want to be a dental hygienist. You know, gotta you have go. multiple hustles. I hear they make some good money you too. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, rap. It, it's, it's. I love it, but I, I always gotta have a fallback plan. So, definitely. Not, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. 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 So, um, when would you say you jumped off the porch then, that old way? I'm gonna say like. So when you say jump off the porch, elaborate for me, what you mean? So my <laughs> definition is like, when did you start getting out and seeing life, you know, by mm. yourself? Not, not with your parents and all that, just kind of just being out there. And well, you know, my parents, like I said, they weren't in, they weren't in, you know, around for real. But uh, I'm going to say like 13, that's when I really just start getting into stuff like, you know seeing the world for what it was and just getting out exploring. I'm going to say like 13 is okay. when I jumped out the porch. I yeah. got you. So what's your relationship like with your dad today? Have you guys been able to build a strong bond? <laughs> it's cool. It's all right. You know, it could be better, but when you go so long without some, it gets on point. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I build my own little family, so I'm happy with that. Okay. Yeah. So what has being a mother taught you about life? Oh, you got to have patience, baby. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's with <laughs> any son, parent. My son is horrible. He is so cute. He How is, old is he? He two. Oh, and yeah. He is when they say terrible twos, ooh, really terrible twos. I think threes might even be worse. Oh, <laughs> I'm scared. They call it three-nagers. Oh, I'm scared. Like... He is terrible. He's so smart and so cute. Like, so I just, I be like, just shocked, just seeing the growth and every day something new, you know, just seeing him go into his own little person and mm -hmm. just run around. It's amazing. I love it. You know, I get a little overwhelmed, you know what I'm saying? But it be cool. It's it's dope. He funny. Oh yeah. It's definitely a full-time job. Being man, a it's a lot of responsibility and you gotta have a lot of patience. That's what it's taught me. Like be patient mm -hmm. with anything. No, that's real. <laughs> yeah. So who'd you grow up listening to? Like who were some of your favorite artists that might have inspired you? Oh, I love music. So I listen to a lot of different people. Of course, Nicki Minaj. Okay. I love Nicki. I love, I'm a Louisiana girl at heart. So I love Kevin Gates. Webby, Wayne, Boosie, like anybody in Louisiana, you know, I, I love it. Um, I love our culture. I love Lucci. I love me some Lucci. Lucci. Oh, free Lucci, like one of the hardest forever. Um, yeah, so them some of the people I listen to, which I listen to a lot of other people too, but them some mm -hmm. of the main people like I really like. I like what they do, and I can listen to them, you know what I'm saying, and get inspired. So, okay. Yeah. So, would you say, like, uh, you really started making music just kind of, like, as a therapy to yourself? Because, like you said, you was going through some shit when you I, first started. Oh, I was going through it. Um, yeah, it was, like, basically it started off, like I said, 2019, I moved back home to Shreveport. I'm, in, you know, sleeping in my car. I'm really going through it. Mm. And I started making music. I'm writing every day. And I was just like, I never knew like I wanted to be an artist or anything like that. But when I started writing, I'm like, hmm, I'm pretty good at writing. I always been good at English and stuff like that. So I'm like, you know what? I probably could do this. But then um, I moved back to Huntsville and I kind of like was like, I got pregnant with my son. I wasn't really worried about it. But after I had him, I wanted more. I wanted something different. I'm like, you know what? I need a change. Like. I started writing all this music. Maybe I should try doing it. Mm -hmm. 
So I was like, okay, you know, you, you always say, you know, this and this, but it's time to actually start putting in work and actually doing what you say you want to do. Yeah. So I told myself, like, we're going to actually try it and see. So when I uh, got in the studio for the first time, which was like 2020, I released a song called Quarantine, Quarantine Flow. And oh, that I went up too. Yeah, and it went up and I didn't expect any of that. So I'm like, what, this is my first song, you know, first time <laughs> studio, what? So I'm like, okay, maybe I got something. So then I, I released a freestyle. I said, okay, I'm gonna record a freestyle in my car and see how I do. Hmm. Next day I woke up, Tokyo Jets posted on her Instagram and Twitter oh, wow. and it was going crazy. And I was just like, what? Like, maybe, you know, I should keep doing this. I, I see the response and feedback of the people and it's great every time I drop something. So, but of course life happens. I took a break which I shouldn't have did. Um, I was just like, you know, I'm going through stuff. I don't want to deal with music. I don't want to deal with nothing right now. So I came back, Glorilla Drop, uh, F-R-E-E, Foot New Reason. I'm like, I like that. And I dropped my version. Mm -hmm. It said 600,000 on TikTok. I went viral. I'm wow. like, oh, snap, girl. <laughs> if you don't stay consistent, you know what I'm saying? The people, when it's one thing, a lot of people try to do music, but everybody can't get in. Like, you know what I'm saying? So when you got something to where you grasp the people's attention like that, every time you do something, no promo involved and stuff like that. Oh, it's all gotta, organic, yeah. You got to organically, yeah, like you got to stick with it because it might just be your calling. And I'm having that conversation with myself now, which is why I'm making sure I stay consistent. But yeah, so then, you know, I took another break, unfortunately, but now I'm back January the 8th. I dropped my first animal TV. Fat Joe reached out, Peasy from Detroit. Oh, wow. Hurricane, like, I don't want to name drop too many people, but I've had so much great feedback. I just been like, all right, I'm, I'm at it and I'm locked in now. So yeah, that's yeah. how I started and that's where I met with it. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, these famous animal TVs, <laughs> I, oh, he's been going crazy. Shout out to you him. You had to spin the block on them too. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to him, shout out to him, for real. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely put eyes on me. So labels, all kind of great things coming from it. So hey, shout out to famous animal. Yeah. So what's your creative process? Do you write all of your raps or do you punch in? Do you go off the top with some of this? Okay, or? so I used to write everything. I didn't know how to punch in. I hated it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I would try. I'm like, this feel funny. This don't sound right. I would try. Um, it just wasn't working. But now it's hard for me to write. Now I've taught myself how to punch in and how to freestyle and as I'm like getting better and better at it, like when I try to write, it take me a long time. Hmm. So that's where I'm at with it. I kind of mix it up. Sometimes I will still write, so I'll do both, but I prefer punching in. Okay. Yeah. You just feel <laughs> yourself getting more and more comfortable. Yeah, doing that then, huh? yeah, for yeah. sure. I got you. When do you feel like you make your best music then? It's like when Ooh, you're pissed off. When, when you... I'm sad, when I'm, oh, when I'm sad or I'm mad, it's over with, I'm going in. <laughs> Period. <laughs> and I hate that it's like that, but I think a lot of people like that. Mm -hmm. Mary J. Blige, Keish Cole, like a lot of people, singers, writers, rappers, like they make the best music when they got something to talk about, like when they going through it. And I think it's like that for me too. Yeah, because I think the, you know, the fans, the listeners are able to relate. They get me feel oh, that yeah. emotion coming from you. It's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I be doing that. I be going through that same shit too. Oh yeah, it's one thing to be able to rap, but you'll have more longevity, in my opinion, if you could connect with people. If you got some substance and something they can relate to, I think you'll make it further than just being able to put. Because anybody could rap, anybody could write, but when you actually talking about something, like it's gonna keep people engaged with you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, most definitely when I'm sad and mad, I'm turned up. Yeah. And like we talked on, it's kind of therapeutic too. It's oh, kind of yeah. like, yeah, I probably yeah. feel you probably feel better afterwards too. <laughs> like, shit, I'm glad I rapped about it instead of you know punching a wall or taking that out on someone Ooh, else. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, yes, it's better. Just if you're a rapper, you going through something, just put it in the music. Don't don't catch no charge. Don't throw your life away. <laughs> you know, it's too much money out here. No, nah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I saw the blogs picked up this comment you made. Oh. Uh, about. You, you literally, I think the quote was like, uh, it seemed like DJ Bebe 
seems like he doesn't want to push an artist from Shreveport. Yeah, so somebody made a post on the blog and I think they were like, um, Bebe had signed an artist from Dallas or co-signed or something like that. <laughs> And Bebe is from Shreveport, you know, but mm -hmm. he in Texas now doing his thing and stuff like that. But when they said it, somebody tagged me and was like, hey, you know, he needs to get hip to at the real break A, which people always tag me and stuff and stuff like that. So I didn't think nothing of it. I coming up underneath it. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, but it seemed like, and I said seemed because I wasn't sure of that, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't standing with like, oh, you know, forget him, F him, nothing like that. I was just saying, well, it seemed like, you know, he don't really want to cuss out nobody from the city. With the little sad face. <sighs> when I did that, <laughs> next minute, I see Dallas Global coming under something. I'm like, what they coming under that I'm tagged in? So I go check it. And this blog that put me, <laughs> went and found like my pictures, went and found my music, and went and posted it on their blog and put the headline, I, you know, feel like he don't want to co-sign, which I got major love and respect for him. So it wasn't out of place of maliciousness or nothing like that when I said it. And that's why I said scene because I wasn't sure. But, oh, that just taught me you got to watch what you say. Oh, yeah. It was people in the comments, like, really bashing him, really, like, going in, oh, fuck him. He don't want to put nobody on front of the city. I'm, it was somebody in the comments with a little baby feature. They didn't even pick up they comment. I'm like. Dude got a little bit of Why y'all ain't post him? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to him. Shout out to Mozzie because he hard too. He from the street for it too. But mm -hmm. y'all like, this the person y'all need to pick up on. But hey, for some reason, you know, we won't break A. They posted what I said. So shout out to them because it was promo regardless. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Rap Media 2023. <laughs> <I see. laughs> Well, they'll see. find a comment on <laughs> not even your post and now making you a post. I swear, that was crazy. But I, now I kind of see like how it goes. So yeah. I got to kind of, you know, but I'm so real and raw. I ain't sugarcoating shit for nobody. It is what it is, you yeah. know. So. You should always be able to speak your mind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But shout out to Baby, I don't got no issues with him. Yeah, he's a pioneer for your you city. Know, exactly. I'm happy, you know, he doing his thing and... You know, well, I see him at the top, period. There you go. <laughs> um, I see you're about to drop this new single, Resignation Letter. Yes. Talk to us about the inspiration for oh. this one. <sighs> Baby, Resignation Letter. I was going through it once again, you know. Like I said, I make my best music. I was going through heartbreak and dealing with somebody, dealing with a long-term relationship. You know, they keep on doing they doing you know fuck shit and i was just like tired over it and i wrote resignation letter you know it was therapy like it was just basically you know what it's called resonation letter. like you know you keep doing this shit it was over with so i wrote it and i dropped a little snippet they went crazy like everybody that hear it they're like this the one like i can relate to this and that's what i want i want my music to be able to touch people i want them to be able to say like damn i I could visualize that, you know, so, yeah, it's on the way. Here, okay. that's my baby. <laughs> what can you tell us about the music video? Like, what direction is this going in? It's very simple, but it's sexy. It's in the house, you know what I'm saying? Roll bone, just drinking my wine, sitting, you know, just vibing and writing my, writing my letter. <laughs> And really just, just, it's a vibe. Like, it's just like some heartfelt shit, some raw shit. And the whole ambience and vibe of it matches what I'm saying in the song. Shout out to One Nation Productions, cause he did his thing on the video and I I'm, I love it. And me, I'm very picky, very critical. Hmm. So for it to come out like that, it's, it's perfect. It's, you know, more than what I imagined. So yeah, okay. I'm ready for y'all to see it. We're ready to see it. <laughs> We got a date in mind, or are you still plotting? <sighs> we still plotting. Okay. It's, it's pending. It's pending. Okay. And I understand you're working on your first project, right? I am. My mixtape, We Won't Break A, um, is a roller coaster. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm one minute I'm turned, you know, next minute I'm sad, next minute I might be mad one minute. So it's going to happen <laughs> when they feel it. They ready to 
you know, put the kids to bed and cry, you know, go to church and pray. They were to slap somebody for one minute, you know, turn up at the club next, hit somebody with a ball the next minute. So it's a roller coaster ride, but it's real. Like I said, I'm raw. My music is really like me, a reflection of like how I feel, what I go through day in, day out. So I hope, you know, it does what it's supposed to do and reach the people it's supposed to reach because it's, it's a great project. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been working on this? Is this something you just started putting together? Is this something you've been working on for a while? Or? Well, me, like I said, I'm so like critical of myself. I've been working on it, but then I just went, nah, you know what I'm saying? So as I'm progressing and I'm, you know, making more music, you know, I'm just like, it's time. Like you can't keep sitting on it. So I kind of, it's, it's half and half like, I just started back working on it, but I kind of been like having it in mind and in motion. It just kind of took a little back burn, but now I feel like it's time, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it. Gotcha. Yeah. You plan to put any features on there, or is it gonna be all breakhead since we want breakhead? Right now, it's all me, but I'm definitely like open to features in the future. I definitely wanna do some features. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about producer-wise? Who have you been locked in with? DJ Chopper, I got a lot of songs on my mm. project. Shout out to him. I, I love his beats. Uh, Loco, La Flair. I got, uh, I'm trying to think. That's a good question. There's so many. Uh, Phantom Music. So I got a couple dope producers on there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What are we thinking? Summertime or? Springtime? When we when we dropping? I want to drop spring. That way it can go ahead and flood the streets. By the summertime, we taking over. By the winter, when they come back down, I'm going to calm the music back down with them, and we're going to drop that too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's what's good. Mm -hmm. uh, so you work with my boy Zella. Yes. On this step <laughs> Shout show. Out to him. Oh. Shout out to him, cause we snapped on Step Show. Like I mm -hmm. had so many people, oh, this, they go crazy over it. And I love it, so we're gonna shoot the video soon. Okay. Turn them up, period. Yes. Yeah. No, I fuck with that one too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, independent artists, talk about some of the challenges that come with being the independent, and also oh. a new artist in the game too. Oh, being independent, you know, it take a lot. It's like a lot. You gotta really invest in yourself. You say you're gonna be an artist, especially independent artist, like be ready to invest. Features, shows, going here, going there, interviews, clothing, hair, makeup, like, you know, it's like a lot. So that's one of the downsides because you gotta spend so much, but it takes money to make money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that's the biggest downside. And then um it's time consuming, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're gonna have to make sacrifices sometimes, like with me being in school full time and trying to do my music, sometimes they complete, yeah. you know? And also like, being a parent too. <laughs> yeah, and full time mom. And then, you know, I'm trying to do this, do that. It, it, it's, like I said, time consuming, very expensive. So that's some of the downsides. Yeah, understood. Yeah. So looking ahead, what's some short term, what's some long term goals you got set for your music career then? Okay, so short term, just getting it out like we gotta make sure i'm steady you know working on writing and getting the product out there and stuff like that but at long term like i really want to figure out how i can reach a bigger audience like i really am passionate about it i really want to do it um and also like not only just reaching a bigger audience, like staying consistent, staying hard, staying hungry for it, and locking in. And honestly, it's some music business at the end of the day. Like mm -hmm. music is one thing, but it, this shit all business. So figuring out how I can tap in, get in, get my money, feed my family, feed my son. You know what I'm saying? It's my ultimate goal with it. So that's my long term goal. Yeah. Short term is just making sure that I just get the product out there, just making sure I stay with some fresh ideas and, you know, freestyles and stuff like that. But but ultimately like the money need to come. Oh yeah. When you're putting so much money in, it's <laughs> you know like, what I'm yeah. saying? Ultimately, okay, how can we can we sell some merch? Can we got now 
do some shows. Like, we, how we gonna make this money? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's my long time goal. I got a little son. I'm trying to put a little plain Jane on his little wrist. You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? I need that check, period. <laughs> nah, for real. Yeah, so that's that's definitely my long time goal. Get some money up out of it. You know what I'm saying? And then find other businesses and ventures to invest in, keep it going, like build some generational wealth off of yeah. it. That's, that's what I want to do. I feel that, <laughs> definitely. All right, Bray, so go ahead and, you know, plug your social media and let everyone know where to find you at, too. Y'all can find me at The Real Bray K. And mind you, I just started that page, y'all, in January. Like, oh, you turned already, though. I swear to God, I started, I had maybe 600 followers, and I now I'm at 10.4 and growing. So let that show y'all that if it's something you want to do, go after it. Anything is possible. So, yeah, at The Real Bray K. Y'all can follow me, or y'all can follow me on TikTok at We Won't Break K. Either one, I'm lit. Y'all see what the fuck going on, period. Yeah. You got a shout out you like to give before you wrap it up here? Any shout out? Shout out to my managers. You know, shout out to Absolute. Shout out to Cali. Um, shout out to all my heartbreakers. If you're a heartbreaker, if you support Break K, hey, we want Break K, hey, you support my movement. I love you. I fuck with you. Like, we going up this year. Stay tuned, period. <laughs> DGB. Right, Let's go. Can't hate on no bitch, I'm harder. Walk on beach, it like they water. Lie to a nigga, shit like I'm a lawyer. I tell him I love him, he tell me he loyal.